Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic in Her Office. Last time I introduced to you the stoic notion of lecton, or basic sentence components that gets used in the development of stoic logic. We had lecta, and then we also had negations of lecta, so taking just an ordinary sentence and adding not, or it is not the case that in front of it. Now, were we doing this in kind of the a historical, anachronistic way that we looked at the Aristotelian syllogism. I would define you a language, I would define you rules for constructing grammatical sentences, and then we would talk about when those sentences are true and false. I'm not going to do that here because we're not developing the Stoic system in a formal way. I'm just introducing it to you so that you have a sense of how the historical developments went that kind of got us from Aristotelian syllogistic in the you know, 5th century BC to modern propositional logic in the 20th century AD. So what I would like to do, just to kind of give you a hint or a flavor of what the Stoic systems looked like, is to just give you a bunch of example sentences from, their, from the writings of the Stoics. So the most important logical connective, both historically and nowadays, is implication. So the connection of two sentences, exp one expressing a condition of the other. So two lecta can be combined to form one of these implications, and some examples that we find in the Stoic literature include the following. If there are gods, then the universe is conducted according to divine foresight. If the earth is flying, then the earth exists. If the earth is flying, then it has wings. If he is moving, then he is walking. He just being either some arbitrary person or maybe whoever is speaking is kind of pointing to somebody and saying he. If it is day, it is light. If it is night, it is dark. If it is day, then I am conversing. If it is night, then I am conversing because I never stop talking. If it is night, then it is day. So what you can see is that you can have fairly complex ideas expressed in the basic lecta, such as the universe is conducted according to divine thought, and you can also combine two sentences that don't necessarily seem like they should be combinable, like if it is day, then it is night. The next way that you can take two lecta and combine them into a more complex sentence is with disjunction. So there are two examples that I'm going to give you of disjunction. One of them is actually the first premise of a complex form of argument. And we will talk about argument forms maybe in the next video, maybe the video after. Not exactly sure what order I'll do it in. But we could take as a sentence, either you will marry a beautiful woman or you will marry an ugly one. And then the rest of the argument doesn't involve disjunctions, but it does involve some of the other logical connectives. The argument goes, if she was beautiful, you will share her with others. If she is ugly, she will be a punishment. Neither of these things is desirable. Therefore, do not marry. Alternatively, in the 21st century, you might say, don't be such a misogynist, you Stoics. Anyway. But another thing that we could say with disjunction is that pleasure is either good or bad, or neither good nor bad. So this actually has disjunctions embedded in disjunctions, which is pretty cool. And then finally, the last uh, way that you can combine sentences together is with conjunction. Conjunction is quite boring. It's basically taking a bunch of separate sentences and combining them all together. For instance, Scipio was the son of Paulus and was twice consul and triumphed and was censor and was colleague in the censorship of El... Sorry, I have to look at my notes. Mumius. And he overcame Hannibal in Africa. So conjunction just takes all of these statements about Scipio and puts them all together. You can also just take two sentences. So like if I had said Scipio was the son of Paulus and was twice consul, this is also a legitimate combination of uh, two lecta. You don't have to have more than two in order to have a conjunction. So that is just kind of an overview of the sorts of kind of logical combinations of sentences that you find in Stoic discussions. What we want to look at next is when are these combinations true and what forms of arguments are going to be considered good ones. So that's the topics of the next videos. Hope to see you then. Cheers.